I'm Grandma Hilde, and today we are making Kringla. The first step is we need to knead the dough, and then we need to roll it into a log. And then we will cut the log in half. And then each half will make approximately 12 Kringlas. Now that we have a half, we will cut each half into six pieces and then we will start rolling the dough. And the reason I do this is because I want every piece to be about the same size so it will roll and bake equally. Okay, so you take a piece of the dough and you start rolling. And you roll it into a a snake about this long. Then you take the two loose ends, put them together, and you twirl the dough, twist it six times. And then you take the looped end over the loose ends, place it on the cookie sheet. And you just continue on till they're all done. Who taught you how to make Kringles? My cousin, Vicki Ness, taught me how to make Kringles. Her grandma was Norwegian, and she had this recipe, and Vicki taught me how to roll these out. She also gave me the recipe, but over the years, I've changed it up a little bit. So I guess you could say it's my recipe now. Well, they bake for 10 minutes, and I switched the pans halfway through the baking time. So five minutes for one on the bottom, five minutes for the other on the top, and then switch them out. When you roll the dough out into a snake, how long is it? Well, we should probably get it out, get a measurer out and measure. Okay, now I've got the dough rolled out. Let's measure it, see how long it is. Okay. Approximately 10 inches. Now we need to put the Kringles into a preheated 350 degree oven. Halfway through the baking time of 10 minutes, we need to shift the trays. I will now set the timer for five minutes. While those are baking, we have some more questions. How many Kringles do you get from one batch? Well, from one batch of Kringles, it can vary anywhere from five dozen to six dozen, depending on humidity, the amount of flour that was actually used, and um, how well I gauged my cutting of the pieces. If you had to estimate, on average, how many batches do you make in one month? In one month, probably only one, one a month from like probably March through September. Then as we get closer to Christmas, I make more, lots more. How many, how many years have you been making Kringles? 51 years. I started making Kringles when I was 10 years old. Grandma says with holiday season, she makes 50 batches a year at least. She says each batch makes five or six dozen. Let's say 5.5 dozen on average. So that's 275 dozen per year. There are 12 in each dozen. That's 3,300 Kringles per year. If grandma's been making them for 51 years, that's a total of 168,300 Kringlas. Now, if each Kringla snake is 10 inches long, that is 1,683,000 inches, or about 140,250 feet, which is about 26.5 miles of Kringlas. That's longer than a marathon. 
Now that the five minute interval is up, we need to change the position of the pans. The top ones go on the bottom, and the bottom ones go on the top. And then we bake them for another five minutes. Now that our baking time is up, I'm going to take the kringlas out of the oven. This is our finished product. We need to put them on a cooling rack, or you can put them on paper towels to cool before you put them into a tin can. There's no need to grease the pans because they are rolled in flour and they won't stick. Let them cool completely before you put them into a, a receptacle for keeping. I usually put mine in a tin can like that over there. You can keep them out at room temperature or you can refrigerate them. best eaten warmed up with a little bit of butter on them with coffee or with milk or hot chocolate. These are a Norwegian cookie bread and they are absolutely delicious. This concludes my tutorial on how to make Kringlas. Enjoy!